Good morning, everybody. I want to remind everyone of a very little-known story of the FBI shooting of a man named Eric Allport. Uh, real quick, before we get into that, if you want to stay up to date on the latest news and stories that maybe you're not going to hear anywhere else, sort of under uh, underreported stories, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm constantly covering stuff that in many cases you're not really going to hear anywhere else. Um, they tend to be things that just kind of fly under the radar, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you enjoy the video, if you like it, share it, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know. Uh, YouTube tends to demonetize every single video I make, and they also tend to bury us, so it does help with the algorithms. But um, for people who might not be familiar with Eric Allport, you can find out more about him on my Substack. You can also subscribe for to get my newsletter. That is radixverum.substack.com. A link to that will be included in the video description. So um, let's just talk about what happened here in this case. And we'll get into the questions. The FBI has continued to suppress their own internal review into the killing of Eric Allport, which took place in October of 2020. The FBI attempted to conceal the autopsy of Allport's death, which is classified as a homicide, and it took the Detroit News more than a year to obtain that autopsy report, and the details in that are very interesting. It leaves us with a lot of questions, which we will get into, but I do want to first um, commend the Detroit News for taking the time to kind of pursue this. I had not heard of this, and I had been somebody, if you're familiar with my channel, who was reporting on the FBI's um, Michigan Whitmer kidnapping plot uh, case, which if you have not um, paid attention to that trial, it basically came out that the FBI entrapped these guys and tried to manufacture uh, an incident of DT. So um, I encourage people to read the 20 plus articles I have written going into um, discovery materials that came out at trial that showed uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that the FBI had 12 informants and two undercover agents in that caper and that they orchestrated and ran the thing from start to finish, okay? So it, they uh, were arrested just a couple days after the shooting of Eric Alport in the same area. So that in itself is a little bit concerning. We know that the FBI has a history of misconduct and corruption. And the death of Eric Alport came at a time when there were riots across the country um, over sort of excessive force by law enforcement and a lack of transparency around this use of excessive force. So anytime a citizen is killed by law enforcement, there needs to be a justification for that use of force provided and there needs to be accountability. The lack of transparency and the appearance of an active cover-up has left many unanswered questions, and the family of Eric Alport deserve answers. Eric Alport also happened to be one of the few witnesses um, of the Ruby Ridge standoff, which also involved FBI corruption. That was one of the original PATCON operations, PATCON standing for Patriot Conspiracy, that also involved FBI misconduct. So it just seems very interesting, even that connection, people unaware of the Ruby Ridge standoff that happened back in 1992. Um, Randy Weaver was uh, living in a cabin with his family. They were next to... Um, an Aryan Nation uh, church or something like that, and the FBI tried to get Randy Weaver to basically become an informant for them. He said no, and so they came up with some absurd weapons charge, just like they did with Eric Allport. So it's it just the connections here, um, and it, what seems to be a pattern is kind of, uh, it makes me feel sick. 
So some background for people unfamiliar with that incident can be uh, found um, in an article that I previously wrote uh, about the death of Eric Allport when the autopsy finally came out. That was not that long ago. I will include the link to that in the video description. But here's a basic rundown of what the FBI claims happened. Eric Alport was seemingly executed by FBI agents in the parking lot of a Madison Heights stakeout, a steakhouse. Eric was shot, quote, once in the back and three times in the head, unquote, according to the autopsy report, which we just got thanks to the Detroit News. The exact circumstances and details of the shooting have been covered in layers of secrecy that have been imposed by the FBI. Um, there's something that they don't want the public to see. FBI investigators have so far refused to discuss the shooting in any detail, and they have failed to release their own internal review into the shooting or provide any transparency or accountability whatsoever. This leads many investigators, journalists like myself, but also members of the public to wonder what really happened and why the need for such secrecy if everything that happened in this shooting was above board. And by the way, this comes on the heels of a jury acquitting two men that were accused in the case I just mentioned. The um, They were accused by the FBI of plotting to kidnap and murder Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. And the jury also found a mistrial on the other two defendants. The defense attorneys in that case argued successfully that their clients were entrapped by the FBI and evidence that was presented in that trial, and there was a lot of it, showed that the FBI ran that plot from start to finish with the use of 12 informants and two undercover agents. So the shooting of Eric Allport, the killing of him by the FBI, happened in Michigan in the same place just days before they make arrests in the Whitmer caper. Now, the FBI has claimed that these cases are unrelated and that Alport was under investigation for a federal weapons charge. But there are many unanswered questions, and here are some of those questions that we have about Eric Alport's death. Why did the FBI decide to confront Eric Alport in broad daylight outside of a steakhouse? Did something happen that required Alport to be approached in that manner? Did the FBI give any consideration to the fact that this is a public area with consumers and business owners in proximity? You know, it's a restaurant. There are a couple other businesses there. It's like a pretty busy pedestrian area. Why confront him here? Did they consider that during this confrontation, an innocent bystander could have been harmed or possibly even killed? Why not choose to arrest him at an area that there would be less people at, like perhaps, I don't know, maybe his home? Did the FBI contact him and ask him to turn himself in? If not, why? How long had the FBI been surveilling Eric Allport? Was the Eric Allport case in any way connected to the Whitmer kidnapping plot hoax? I know that the FBI has said that they weren't, but we want proof. We really want to know answers we demand transparency. We demand accountability. Were any of the same FBI agents who worked the Whitmer caper involved in the Alport case? Now, this is important for a number of reasons, but primarily because the three lead FBI agents in the Michigan Whitmer caper all were involved in misconduct. And I mean extreme misconduct. A uh, Richard J. Trask, one of the lead FBI agents, um, not only was he running a side business as like a personal trainer, uh, but he also had a domestic violence issue where he took his wife to a swingers party in Kalamazoo and she, he got upset that she basically didn't want to cuck him by having intercourse with other men. So he was intoxicated and when they got home he proceeded to violently assault her and almost kill her and 
um you can see the video of that it's on my gab tv i have the the police cam footage from richard trask's arrest okay you can see blood all over the sheets in their bedroom you can see bruises on his wife and what happened was he got on top of her he had bashed her head against the nightstand and then he got on top of her and was strangling her she only got him off of her by kicking him in uh the <clears throat> in the balls and then he fled in a vehicle while clearly intoxicated and shirtless and covered in blood and the police when they were trying to get trask to come in to turn himself in they're like hey this guy is involved in like counter terror for the fbi this is somebody who probably has weapons and knows exactly like how to uh evade law enforcement so they were scared of like arresting this guy they meet him in a parking lot he agrees to turn himself in he's immediately released he is not charged with attempted murder like he should have been charged with he's not even charged with a dui when he was clearly intoxicated when he fled in that vehicle and when he turned himself in in the parking lot so the other lead fbi agent for this heinrich and paula had been accused of perjury in another case uh, also involving fbi informants and jason chambers the main fbi agent in the michigan kidnapping plot hoax he was found running a private intelligence company as a side business called eggs intel that just so happened to be seeking multi-million dollar government contracts to advise on cases of domestic terror that's a conflict of interest okay and by the way the jury and the the michigan kidnapping plot hoax they weren't allowed to hear any of what we just discussed with those three fbi agents it the judge didn't allow that to come in and they still found that these guys were entrapped by the FBI. So yeah, we need to know if any of those same corrupt, dirty agents were involved in the Eric Alport case. It is incredibly important. Now the FBI has claimed that an agent was shot in the sh during this shootout. But what is interesting about this is they simply imply that it was by Eric Alport, but they don't state for sure. And I want to know if actually that agent was shot in um fr in friendly fire basically by another fbi agent and if that agent was shot by friendly fire and not eric alport is that why the fbi has so far refused to release their internal review into this shooting are there any recordings of the shooting that can be seen or provided because this happened in a parking lot of um a basically a business area right there's a restaurant there's a couple other businesses those businesses tend to have cctv cameras going so we know the fbi doesn't have to wear body cams like police officers do they don't have to record their interrogations of you they get to file what's called a form 302 after the fact where they just make claims and i guess we're supposed to take our word for it and that must change but are there any surveillance footage from cameras of one of the nearby businesses that can show us exactly what happened in this shootout if so, has the FBI identified said footage? Have they confiscated it? Have they collected it? Is that something that they are also suppressing? We need to know. Here's another question. Do any witnesses corroborate or contradict the FBI's story about the shooting? What is the justification for withholding the autopsy and the FBI's internal review into the shooting. Were the agents in FBI uniform or were they wearing civilian attire? Another very important question. If the agents claim Alport was facing them as he was on his way to his vehicle when the shootout occurred, how did Alport get shot in the back and in the head three times? And another thing, why was Alport shot so many times? Was that really necessary? We demand answers from the FBI, and we demand the release of the internal review into the killing of Eric Alport on behalf of not only his family, but the American people. Um, thank you guys for listening to this video. 
this is a really important story. You know, it's stories like this that often fall through the cracks um, and we just don't hear about it. And we can't let this go. We're going to hold the FBI's feet to the fire, metaphorically speaking, until we get some answers from them. There needs to be accountability for the agents who shot and killed him. I want an investigation into those agents and their conduct because it seems to me that this entire thing could have been avoided and Mr. Alpor could still be alive today had they gone about this total in a different way. What they did was reckless. It was, in my opinion, uncalled for. Anyways, um, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to share it. Uh, no one's going to find out about my channel or my videos because of the, the nature of the subject matter that we cover. So please make sure to smash the like button, leave a comment. Comments help, I think, in the algorithms. Subscribe and then just share the video. Tell people about my channel. Let them know if you want to hear stories that you're probably not going to hear anywhere else. My channel is the place to go. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good day. I may or may not have a, another video coming later on. Um, I'll keep you guys posted.